Hello, my name is Michael Bojanski, and I'm a North Carolina Eastern Region Odyssey of the Mind official and judge. This video is part of a series of videos on how to set up and run spontaneous problems effectively as a team. Now, coaches can use this resource, or team members can use this resource. It does a good job of both introing the problem, setting up the problem, how the team solves the problem, and then also how to run the debrief effectively. Now, this video is hosted on the Odyssey of the Mind Wiki, which is a great resource not only for spontaneous problems, but for any other question you might have about outside assistance, long-term, and style. You can see a link to the wiki and also to the spontaneous section of the wiki in the description. Please enjoy the video, and if you have any questions, please comment or contact the administrator of the wiki directly. Thanks so much. The problem we're doing right now is called up, up, and away, and it's a hands-on problem. This is a type of tower building hands-on problem, which basically means that the team has to build some sort of structure and it receives points for maximum height. This specific problem has the team building a tower within two taped areas, and that it ha they have to hold a piece of wood that is supported by part of a structure in both taped areas. As I said, the specific layout is on a table with two taped areas um, some inches apart. And the way it works is that I taped so that the outside edge of the tape is the boundary of those different squares. At the judge, you always have to call time when the team asks, and it's also something that in this problem, they could only be scored once. At the end of the video, after the team solves the problem, and after I go over some debrief with the team, I'll also come back here and I can debrief some general learnings that you as a coach or as a team member should take from watching this problem. Okay, so I'll read the problem to you guys, and you have team, pro team copy in front of you, and you can be looking at this as I read it. Okay, here we go. This is a hands-on problem. In an actual tournament, you would have one minute to select the five team members to compete. You will have eight minutes to discuss the problem and create your solution. The judge will warn you when you have two minutes and when you have one minute remaining. You may ask questions or talk to each other at any time. This is a hands-on problem. There's a table with two taped squares on it. Tape square here, tape square here. You may, cannot change the setup, so you can't remove the tape or move the table around. There are materials on the table in front of you for you to use to create your solution. Materials, there. There is a pair of scissors for you to use, but it cannot be part of the solution. So you can cut the pipe cleaners or cut the straws, but you can't actually use the scissors. Your problem is to build supports to hold this piece of wood as high as possible above the table. When your solution is finished, it can only touch the table within the taped squares. The wood must touch supports, supports from both areas. It must not touch anything else. So these are the two areas. It must have supports within this area and within this area. The edge of the square is the edge of the tape. It's not this part, it's this part. Does that make sense? You will be finished when time ends or when you ask to be scored. Once you are finished, you are not allowed to touch your solution. You will be scored as follows. You will receive 10 points if your supports meet the requirements and touch the table only within the taped areas. You will receive 2 points for each half inch the wood is supported above the table. You will receive 1 to 15 points for your creative use of materials. You will receive 1 to 15 points for how well your team works together. I repeat, your problem is to build supports to hold this piece of wood as high as possible above the table. When your solution is finished, it can only touch the table within the tape squares. The wood must touch the supports from both areas. It must not touch anything else. Your eight minutes begins now. And you may ask me questions at any time, but your we time will continue. Like one there, one here. Should we all we, should we, one I think we should do the exact same thing in each one. Probably. Yes. If you think so, what do we have to say? This can be the entire thing. And what do we have as a ground base to make sure that things don't like slide all right? It's really? too small. I mean, like, that could be used to connect two things together. Could or could like, stick something in. Yeah, and it can connect it into the So is this, is this part of our supplies? Yep. Speed. We could, like, cut it in half. There's only one of them. Guys, we could cut it in half. Okay, half an inch. That's, like, this much. So, 
Really? Yeah, so the, this, so this is the edge. I think we could cut this in half and use half on each, and we could like stick something in it. I'll trade two of these. Yeah. It's so got a lot of stress. We need a plan. Get stuff off of it. You have a cup? You got eight. You can use the scissors. Okay, guys. How? Do we, so let's say we stick something in the stuff. It would be the straw. Okay, use the scissors. The straw. The cup. The straw. This is like the same size, like the the sides. So you should see be adding stuff. So guys, we can stick pencils. And this is pretty sturdy. And we have to figure out a way to connect. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So does this, this is pretty light. Can we just like use something to connect the thing to this? Well, we can tie it. But we're going to have to build the rest on top. Um, it can so be connected or it can rest. Okay, so I'm going to measure how high the lowest part of the stick is above the table, but it has to be supported by so materials like both. Can we use paper clip in this? Oh, yeah, that's good. Paper clip will be longer sturdy. Or rubber band. How do you put paper clip? We have tape still. Oh, yeah, we have tape. Wait, is that part of the tape? Tape part of it? That's your tape. Cut the tape in half. Can we put some pieces of an eraser in it? No, we can tape both ends and then we can tape both ends and then put the rubber band in. Cut the tape in half? Yes. Okay, guys, let's put this down. Don't push it. You guys, should we tape? We could tape this on. Yeah. And then we can use the rubber bands to. I feel like we can make it even taller. We probably could. Because it looks right now. It's not half an inch. Look at we could stick these into the erasers. These are the no, it's not. It's how high this wood is. Yeah, and so but that's too skinny to no, support then, the wood. We tape it on to here. You're right. Oh, we could. We could tape the paper up. If we have, no, if these straws are thicker, we could stick this in and slip the straw through it. It's how high you can. That's a good idea. Or maybe even three. We put three could, to yeah. inside yeah. and then three you the straw. I use a good question to ask me how much time you have. Five minutes left. Okay, so, so, so I think what we could do. Three toothpicks in, put the straw over. Put some toothpicks in the eraser, put the straw, over put the straw it. through, and then tape it again. Yeah. Okay, so I'm taping. Then use the rubber band. I try to save the tape. Okay, so someone hold this. Oh, no. Okay. Could we all go here? Okay, so how are you going to connect? We don't need this much clay on it. Don't beat yourself up, Noah. We don't, but. I don't know what to do that. And what can tin foil be used for? It could even be used to connect the hood, but I think tape's probably a lot better than tin foil. We've got two rooms. Well, uh, I took off some of the clay and then conserved this and used it for later. Sweet. Okay, I think it's going to be okay. Wait, will this, like. Yeah, yeah. let's try it. So, at the lowest point is right here, so we can go much from right there. Yes. Okay. Sweet. I feel like when this is that thing, I feel like it shouldn't be this easy. <laughs> I but feel like it's easy. We're pretty smart, though. Wait, are you measuring that? Where's the top? What? Look at how much we bigger it is. We measure the height of this. Look at how much bigger this shirt is. I know, but if we, I'm pretty sure if we got it too tall, it'd be kind of unstable and fall over. Are you measuring oh, the height of this shirt? We're measuring the lowest point. Is it legal for this to be on the blue tape? Mm hmm. Okay. It's the outside of, so this is this is the edge. Okay. That's why the arrows are. Uh, that's good. Let me score it. I can score you now. No, we you should. We should. Um, you have three minutes and thirty seconds. That's just. That's just. Yes, or I'm just gonna read this. No, because you have to be missing something. It can't be it. No, well. No, yeah. Yes, you get points for every year. Well, the thing is, exactly. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure most people would use the eraser, but maybe they would. I don't know. Ten points for sweep requirements. Two points for each half into the wood is above. Create the material. But we don't know what the materials. lowest thing is. This could be like really short, or it could be. Well, I think it's pretty high. But it could. Somebody could make all the way up. Someone. I'm uh, actually I'm pretty sure that's. But it. what is this? I'm pretty sure this is good. Do you guys want to just want to get scored right now? We, let's just try to think of something. There has else. to be something. Why we, it doesn't mm -hmm. hurt to sit here and think. Well, we only have two. Is there a stability? Kind of does. Does it matter how stable it is? It just has to be stable until I measure it. Okay. Like you say, call call time, and then I measure it, and I test it. That's 
It has to uh, it has stay to until I can measure it. What are you doing? No. I'm making it taller. Watch it fall over and completely break. Okay, I think it's good. Do you want to just go in there? Yeah. Okay, here. Uh, I will get <coughs> measuring tape. And here we go. So it has to be scored. And this guy is, let's give you 15 inches tall. Um, I need a pencil. Awesome. Here we go. So, scoring wise, you are most definitely within the taped area, so you get those 10 points. You're 15, 60, 60 points. Number of half inches in height of the structure. So, you're 30 half inches. Times two to sixty points there. Created use of materials. Um, I just threw this in here just for kicks. I just wanted to see if you do anything oh, with it. Uh, <laughs> I was like, how do you use this? Um, I like I like the toothpicks and the eraser. I think everything else is pretty basic. Uh, so I'll see. We'll give seven points there. How well the team works together? I thought you guys worked great together. I'll give you the thirteen or I'll give you fourteen there. Um, 77 plus 14 is a 91. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so you got 91 points. It's hard to use the points to, to kind of um, instructively because you don't have anybody to compare it with. Um, okay, so what did you all think you did well? I think we had a pretty sturdy structure. structure. Yeah. Okay. So what what about your structure did you think was sturdy and like how did you kind of go about deciding how to make it sturdy? Well, I think that the toothpicks made it a lot sturdier mm -hmm. than it was before and I think that was a good idea. Okay. Um, why did you not choose to use, let's say, the pipe cleaners or any of the other things? Flimsy. They're flimsy. What about well, the cup? I don't want to Yeah, we only have one in the car. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys made the decision to get scored earlier, um, when there's still, I think, about like two minutes of time left. What kind of made you decide to do that? I was against it. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see how we were going to make it taller and yet still sturdy. Okay. Like we could have, but I didn't. Was there any real risk in just, let's say, adding these two and seeing if it could be taller? That's right. There was no risk. risk. There was risk because if the timer went off and you're still trying to build it, we three minutes. Minutes. but you had three minutes remaining. That's right. So, in some problems like this, like this, it could, it, especially when the, your materials are like spaghetti and it can like snap, then sometimes you don't want to take that risk. But for something like this, this is, since if you know this design, it's probably fairly easy to replicate even if the whole thing fell over. Yeah. So I would say it probably would have been a good idea to at least try to use these guys and just see if you could done another, what's this, eight inches? Yeah. Um, or you can see like, you know, could you use, could you use like this and create like a little divot and then even do something like on top of that, right? Mm -hmm. So like that could go in there and that could rest. Um, another thing, which is a possibility, I don't know if this would work, but um, if you had kind of like joined these supports somehow, then as long as the supports are both touching this, then maybe there's some way that if it kind of like went in the middle and then you could have it um, rest on there. That's another idea. Or, I don't know if the problem means to do this, but you could also technically say there are zero or ten points for this inside the square. What if you said, I don't care about those 10 points, I'm just gonna build it as high as it possibly can be, yeah. right? You lose those 10 points, but what if you get 15 more inches? It doesn't matter, right? So that was one thing that was, was good when you were reading through the problem, you're saying, okay, where are these points coming from? But sometimes um, you have to treat, where can I get the most points? And that's an example of, hey, Maybe we won't get the points because it's going to be outside of this, but we can still max out another category. Um, cool. Any other thoughts that you guys had? Things that you liked, didn't like? We probably should have waited a little bit longer to say that we were done. Because well, I, I was like, us. you guys need to be done. I was like, you guys want to be done. Yeah, I thought that was good because you guys were definitely talking about it. I didn't feel like, 
any one of you were like over and was, I think it was it was consensus. I like that you guys were talking about what you wanted to do before you started building. I thought that was really good. Um, and it wasn't like one of you kind of reached in and just started building stuff and then everyone's kind of joining and I thought you did a good job of talking through stuff. Um, and I think you all definitely like looked at what the materials were for you. Um, so yeah, great job. So now you've seen how the problem was solved by this team. Some general things to think about on how the team solved the problem and how to apply this problem to many sorts of other tower building problems or even hands-on problems in general. You always need to understand how much time you have. This team decided to be scored early, which is perfectly fine. They did a very good job of continually asking for how much time is remaining. Judges will always tell the team how much time they have remaining and it's never a penalty. Teams can also decide to have a team member be a timekeeper. And this way, a team could either have an electronic stopwatch or, um, or a regular stopwatch, as long as it doesn't have an alarm function on it. Uh, teams cannot use cell phones to, um, as stopwatches. But a team timekeeper is able to keep track of time for the team, and they also don't have to be um, worried about asking the judges. So this is something that a team should consider. Another thing to think about, especially as the team asks to be scored early, is understanding how much risk there is in continuing to build. Now there's no hard and fast rule for this, but in a problem like this where the team had a relatively stable structure, it might have been a good idea for them to continue building, especially since they had so much time remaining. But again, this is up to the team and it's in each individual scenario. But understanding how much risk there is in continuing is something that a team uh, gets to understand as they do more spontaneous problems. They also did a very good job of making team decisions. There wasn't really any point when the team was uh, separated or making decisions uh, individually. They really made decisions by consensus um, with one or two team members acting as leaders. So they did a very good job of trying to um, have very good teamwork and even though their um, solution might have not had as much height as it could have had, they had a great teamwork in working through it. Um, and then the last point is something that I made in the video is that uh, in some spontaneous problems you can miss points in some areas to get a lot of points in other areas. In this problem the example was that if the team decided to not even build any part of their structure inside the taped areas they would lose uh, the zero or ten points category. But they could make it up in maximum height because they could probably build a much uh, more stable and easy structure now they didn't have to spread it apart. Not all problems have this component, but it's something that teams should always look for as kind of a trick in the actual scoring categories. Um, it's also a good idea to ask judges about this because judges also might say if you don't have, and like in this example, if you don't have um, uh, you know, either part of your structure in these areas then you'll receive no score for height. But it's always something good to ask because there might be a trick in the scoring. Thanks for watching this problem, and I hope you like the other videos of spontaneous problems we have on the Odyssey of the Mind Wiki, which you can find in the description. Thanks.